Hello and welcome to Tesis Defense PowerPoint Contents. In this lesson, I will explain to you the most common points that you must include while you are preparing the presentation PowerPoint slides for your Tesis Defense. Besides, I will give you a PowerPoint template to help you in preparing your PowerPoint slides. I will put the link in the description box below. So, if you want to know what are the most important points that should be included in the PowerPoint slides for your thesis defense, stay with me till the end of my discussion. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification button to get similar videos. Thank you. Let's get started. The first slide must include the logo of your university and the name of your university. And if you have college or department, so you have to state here, your thesis title should be written here and you have to write your name plus your advisor's name here. And you can also write the date of your presentation and the place of your presentation here. Coming to the second slide, which is the presentation outline. The presentation outline includes chapter one, introduction chapter. Under the introduction chapter, we have to include background of the study, statement of the problem, research questions, objectives of the study, significance of the study, and scope of the study. And in chapter two, you have to include the conceptual framework if your study has conceptual framework. If you don't have conceptual framework, so you can skip chapter two. In chapter three, which is the methodology of the study, you have to include research approach, research design, sampling design, data source and method of collection, and method of data analysis. Then in chapter, in chapter four, you have to include the summary of your results along with the discussion. And in chapter five, you have to include the summary of the findings, conclusion, and recommendation. So these are the outlines of your presentation. Coming to chapter one, which is the introduction chapter. So under the introduction chapter, the first point that is to be included is the background of the study. The background of the study, as you know, introduce your topic, telling what the general topic is all about and why it is interesting or important. So here, a strong opening hook. So here you can use a strong opening hook, which conveys the relevance of the topic. You have to include the key studies in the area of your study. And you can start with an interesting factor related to the topic or a question that will get the reader wondering about your topic. Usually the background of the study is less than or equal to two slides. The next topic after the background of the study is a statement of the problem. A statement of the problem is just a concise description of a problem that needs to be addressed with your study. It shows the magnitude or the consequence of the problem that is to be studied. It may be divided into theoretical problem and practical problem. By theoretical problem, we mean that unanswered questions, controversy, or untested hypothesis with the existing literature. So this can be a theoretical problem. It may be a practical problem that exists within the organization or that exists within the community. For example, the report shows that the organization performance is below 60%. So this is an existing problem. This example is just a practical problem, so which can be used as a statement of the problem for our study. Usually, the statement of the problem is not more than one slide. Following the statement of the problem, we have to state the research questions. The research questions are formulated from the statement of the problem. They are directly formulated from the statement of the problem. Research questions are the questions that a study or research objectives aim to answer. So the ultimate, the ultimate purpose of our research is to answer these research questions. So we can write the research question one, two, and three. The research question slide should be not more than one slide. After the research question, objectives of study follows. So the objective of the study is derived from the research question. The only difference between the objective of the study and the research question is that the research question has a format of question, whereas the objective of the study has a format of 
a statement. The objective of the study is what we expect to achieve with our research. It should be stated very clearly in a specific manner, in achievable and in measurable ways. So here we can divide the objective into general objective, which is similar to our title of the study and specific objectives like one, two, three, and four. The significance of the study comes just after the research objectives. So the significance of the study is just a benefit of the research or the importance of the research and it can be divided into theoretical implication and practical implication. By theoretical implication, we mean that the theoretical contribution for the existing knowledge or for the existing studies. The practical implication means that the practical importance in addressing the existing problems. The scope of the study comes just after the significance of the study and it shows the boundary of our research and it tells what is to be included and what is to be excluded. And the scope of the study can be a geographical coverage or a geographical area that the data is drawn from, the time frame of the study, the conceptual scope of the study, what are the concepts that is to be included in the study, and the methodological scope. These are some of the scopes. The scope of the study is not more than one slide. The limitation of the study is just a weakness of the study. It may be a methodological limitation or it may be a sampling technique limitation. Anyway, it is any challenge that will affect the findings of the study. So here we have to put the limitation of the study openly and the limitation of the study is not more than one page. Moving to chapter two, the conceptual framework of the study. So here, if you do have a conceptual framework for your study, you have to put your conceptual framework, which shows the relationship between the variables, the independent variables and the dependent variable. If you do have the mediator, the moderator, so it shows the relationship among such variables. And you have to mention the source here and avoid artistic design in uh, drawing the conceptual uh, framework. If you don't have conceptual framework, you can skip chapter two of your thesis. And this slide is not more than one slide. Chapter three comes just after chapter two, and chapter three is methodology of the study. In the methodology of the study, we have to include the research approach, whether it is quantitative, qualitative, and mix it according to the data types. And the research design, it may be exploratory, descriptive, or explanatory. The target population and the sampling technique should be included. The sample design, the sample size, how we determine the sample size of the study. Data types, whether it is quantitative or qualitative. Source of the data, whether it is primary data or secondary data. And data collection methods should be included. Last, the measurement or the instrument of the study must be stated along with it is source, the reliability and the validity, how we ensure the reliability and the validity must be stated here. We have to include the ethical consideration here. We have to state what are the techniques or what are the strategies that we follow to keep our research to be ethical. And lastly, we have to include the data analysis methods. Actually, if you want to know about such topics, I do have a separate lessons and you can get those lessons in the description box below. The number of slides for this chapter is usually not more than one or two slides. Moving to chapter four, which is results and discussion. Under result and discussion slides, we have to include the demographic analysis. Based on the nature of our thesis, we have to include the descriptive analysis, the inferential analysis, under the inferential analysis, we have to include correlation analysis and regression analysis. Before regression analysis, we have to conduct parametric tests to ensure that our data is normally distributed data. Coming to chapter five, which is the last slide, the last slide includes summary of the major findings, conclusion, and recommendation. So here we have to put the summary of the major findings, only the major findings, not all the findings. We have to put only the major findings. So built on the major findings, we have to put our conclusion here. And following our, our conclusion, we have to put appropriate and suitable recommendations for each of our conclusions. And lastly, 
if we do have a suggestion for future research so we have to put future research direction here this is the end of our today's discussion and thank you for listening just to remind if you are new to my channel please subscribe and hit the notification button to get updates and if you like this particular video please give me thumbs up and share to your friends thank you